Finally, after playing 100 hours of Palia, I wanted to sit down and let you guys know what Palia is all about. Palia has been marketed and sold to the players as a cozy home community building type game that has all of your favorite kind of skills like fishing, gardening, cooking, things of that nature. And it puts you right in the middle of a new multiplayer experience that is somewhat ignored in a lot of other games. They're really trying to focus on like, let's take Stardew and Animal Crossing and things like that and make it a MMO, which in general does sound really great. I mean, I know I've played a lot of other MMORPGs and I do enjoy skilling, but you generally have to commit a lot of time to leveling and doing dungeons and raids and stuff like that. And there's just a lot of life players that want to kind of focus on doing skills. So right off the bat, I was pretty sold because these are things that I personally really love. And then you throw in player owned housing, which I think is one of the greatest things that's ever been implemented into gaming as it gives players that sense of like ownership on what is theirs. Basically, I know I spent hundreds of hours in player owned houses playing RuneScape back in the day. So definitely looking up to be a fantastic game just based off what they were trying to put out there, basically. I will say in regards to like graphics and kind of the feel of the world, the characters, as well as the character that you get to create, they definitely are going for more like vibrant, enjoyable, like beautiful wilderness-esque type graphics. And it does fit the theme very well, I will admit. And they've thrown you all into this by kind of like teleporting you to this world of Palia. In this world, you'll spend the majority of your time in the town of Kalima, which is where you'll meet a plethora of different characters that you're able to build friendships with. These characters are also going to be your main progressors in regards to getting recipes for different skills. And you even have the ability to romance these characters, which is a very common feature that a lot of games like Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, and other like farming type sim games enjoy. Currently, there are only two zones in the game, which is the area of Kalima, and then you have Bahari Bay, which is another area. These two zones have different creatures and people living in both of them, as well as a lot of lore that pertains to both the main storyline and just some random hidden quests or quests that those villagers do give you. Now in regards to story, there isn't a ton of story in this game, but there's definitely a simple main storyline that helps you through the game. It'll kind of not exactly unlock features, but it'll help you learn how to do a lot of the skills as well as give you some items that will help moving and just getting around the world a lot easier. The majority of the quests are given to you from characters that you'll find in the village as well as in Bahari Bay, and they generally relate to skills or having to find something for these individuals. And then once your skills actually hit level 10, you're able to do weekly missions where they'll give you generic missions like go gather, you know, 10 of this go hunt five of these creatures, things of that nature. I will give it some break in regards to the story just because it is in early access currently. So let's just hope that there's going to be a large addition to the story as they release the game. Now, moving on to the gameplay, it is a very like generic gameplay loop. It really just revolves around you doing whatever it is that you want to do. You don't have to particularly raise any skill. You can do any skill that you want. Obviously, there are some things that you need to get done first, just purely because you can't upgrade your tools unless you are able to get the materials that you need to upgrade them. So while you are kind of able to do whatever it is that you want, you will be somewhat limited because you're not able to upgrade your tools. In this game, there is like a tier system when it comes to your tools that you're using. And as you progress through a skill, you unlock recipes for a higher level tool of the same nature. So for mining, for example, you'll unlock pickaxes of different materials. And as you get a new pickaxe, you're able to mine newer materials. So let's say if you were to get fishing up to level 10, you're not going to be able to make any other rod except for the first one after the starter one, because the starter pickaxe can only mine copper. So while I'd love to say that if you just want to fish all day, you can do that. You're definitely going to be limited in what you are able to do. However, if you're playing a game like this, you're most likely going to enjoy every aspect of it. So I don't feel like it's a terrible thing to make you do all of the skills at the same time. And it definitely helps you fill your day up as you're playing the game. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are currently eight skills in the game. That's going to be bug catching, cooking, fishing, foraging, furniture making, gardening, hunting, and mining. And you're able to level up these skills 
pretty much the same way. You just have to interact with whatever that skill is particularly looking at. So for bug catching, for example, there's bugs littered around Palia and you are able to catch them and they're generally used in recipes or occasionally given to the NPCs to increase your friendliness. So you'll go around and you'll throw these kind of like their pouches of gas or like powder that kind of stun the bug and you'll throw them at a bug. You'll pick the bug up and you'll get experience as you interact with that. Mining, fishing, and foraging are all pretty straightforward. Mining, you'll go hit rocks. Fishing, you'll catch fish, which there is a ton of different fish in the game, I have to say. And foraging includes both woodcutting as well as picking random herbs that you'll find in the overworld in Palia. Now, cooking is a, probably one of the more in-depth skills in this game. You're able to do a lot of different things with cooking. It involves several different stations, and you, you have to prep multiple different things, basically, for the same dish. You use cooking to make these foods that give you this thing called focus, which you can just basically say is an additional EXP that you get when you're doing skills. Furniture making is basically just going to use all those materials that you gather to make different furnitures for your house. Player-owned housing is huge in this game, and I'll get to that in a little bit. And then lastly, gardening is very straightforward. You're able to place down soil. Sadly, you have to bat <laughs> you have to buy these three by three squares of soil. You can't just like plant things anywhere. But as you buy these three point uh, three by three squares of soil, you are able to hoe them to kind of make these very obvious looking places you're supposed to plant seeds. You plant seeds and depending on what plant it is, it takes anywhere from one to five days to grow. Through this process, you have to weed the plants, you need to water the plants, and at the end of it, you're able to harvest these plants. One of the things that I did enjoy about this game is that in this gardening, you are able to plant certain plants together and they actually like make your life easier. Potatoes, for example, will help you keep plants next to them watered or tomatoes Actually, you're able to harvest them three times before the plant is actually needed to be replanted. So it has a nice little in-depth system. I enjoyed it a lot, but you're only able to do gardening at your home plot. And now getting into your home plot, you all own a home plot, basically. It is this big rectangle square that if you see from this top-down view, you're able to see all these little areas that you're able to purchase later on to make your own housing plot, basically. In the beginning, you're just going to start off with a tent, but as you progress through the game, you're able to unlock houses, larger houses, add additional rooms to those houses, and through furniture making, doing quests, and meeting the other characters in the game, you're able to get furniture and other things that you're able to place anywhere in this housing plot. I actually really love the housing system in this game. It probably has one of the best placement features that I've seen in a long time. You're able to work on the X, Y, and Z axis. And if you're very particular about the way things want to like line up in your house, I highly, highly recommend this because it is one of the most specific systems I've ever seen. Another nice thing is you're able to take both fish and bugs and actually place them in your house as well. There are not unique items, but quality items basically. And these quality items are generally able to both sell for a lot more and then they will increase the amount of materials or focus that you might get when you're using these quality items. Now when it comes to fishing and bug catching, quality fish and quality bugs are the ones that are able to be shown in your house. And for someone that loves fish, I thought it was really nice that I could catch, you know, there's over like 30 different types of fish in the game. So if you get all of those quality fish, that's a huge aquarium for you. I will say that the negatives right now for the housing system is that the large majority of furniture and things that you're able to make for your house, you're not actually able to interact with. It's a very surprising thing when a game comes out trying to sell this, you know, player owned housing is a huge part of this game and you're very rarely able to interact with almost anything in the house, unfortunately. For example, there's like this thing you can make that kind of looks like a picnic blanket and it has a little canvas on top to give you shade and stuff like that. And you would think in a game like this, you'd be able to like press E to sit down or something like that. Just, you know, enjoy the ambiance. Same thing with your beds. But unfortunately, currently, you're not able to do that. But in regards to the gameplay, the graphics and the story, I do feel like for an early access game, there is a good amount of hours for your average player kind of getting into the community and if this is like a new player friendly type game. I have to say that the community was very inviting, the discord is extremely nice, and the players that you run into in the overworld are also generally very kind to you. 
There are sadly very few things that you're able to do with other players currently, but cooking and these things called flow trees are generally more of the enjoyable features that you're able to do with other players. So while I will say that the community, very, very, very friendly, and this is definitely a game for anyone, sadly, this isn't much of an MMO. So now that we got all the good out of the way, we're going to kind of go into some of the cons that I feel make the game not as enjoyable. And obviously this is an early access game, but I feel like nowadays almost every game is early access basically. This game is in beta, technically, is what they are calling it. And in my opinion, beta is generally when the game is pretty much done and you're trying to do things like stress testing your servers, make sure that, you know, there's no dupes that anybody has found and kind of forgotten from QA and make sure like maybe in a game like this that like the resources that players are able to get are at the right ratio where they're not getting too many and completing things too quickly, but they're not getting too little and having a terrible time farming materials. So I do feel like saying that this game is in beta is kind of just misleading. I feel like this is definitely an early access game and they have a lot to deliver still. So off the bat, starting about the MMO experience. This game has been talked about so much because they keep saying that they are going to be an MMO RPG that is unlike any other. And I feel like that is extremely misleading because this game is just not an MMO. While there are, I'm sure, several thousands of people playing it because the game itself is good, you're not really getting that, like, hundred people in a town experience, you know, you're not going to the farmer's market selling your carrots that you just farmed. They have made it extremely difficult to interact with other players. So, for each zone, there are only 25 players. So, in this whole area, there's only 25 other people in that zone with you. So, I don't know about you, but that's not very massive to me. And this never changes. So very rarely are you going to run into other people in the overworld. I will say that since the zones themselves are not the largest things in the world, you will occasionally see, you know, one or two people, especially if you're farming for specific materials. But it's definitely no massively multiplayer online game. They've also made just the system of getting in parties and actually trying to play with other people very difficult. Parties have been bugged since the release of the beta. It's very difficult to actually get people into your party with several people just disconnecting randomly, party invites not being able to be accepted. So even if you do add people onto your friends list, it's very difficult to be in a party with them. Then the game itself just, there's not really too many things that you're able to do with others. Like I said previously, cooking is something that you can involve multiple people in because some dishes involve, you know, four or five different ingredients. So someone has to cut the mushrooms up. Somebody needs to boil the potatoes really great system i think it's really innovative and just fun and different but other than cooking and cutting down these trees that occasionally require multiple people if you don't have the highest level tool there's almost no reason for you to be playing with other people there is also a bonus for fishing if you have multiple people with you while you're fishing you're able to fish a little bit faster but other than those three things i cannot think of anything that you really need other people for now if you're a solo player that just wants to play this game and maybe your friends aren't really interested in it Definitely a very easy game to play by yourself. But for me, they sold this as this community building MMORPG. So I, I feel like that's a little bit misleading. Now, just moving on to the skills. The skills themselves, some of them very complex, very enjoyable. Some of them very dull. Hunting, for example. In both zones, there are only two types of animals. We got we got the, the deer and we got these little badgers. So we got the Cernuk, which are the deer, and we got the Chapa which are those little badgers. Now, there are like elite versions of these creatures, but there's only one for each one. And it, it really just is very dull, in my opinion. There's, there's this whole skill that revolves around hunting, gathering meat for cooking, gathering hides for like leather crafting and stuff like that. And there's only two things in this whole world. It's kind of weird. I mean, there's over like, I would say at least 15 different insects and at least 30 different fish. So it's very confusing to only have two creatures in this whole skill. Mining and foraging are very straightforward. You go and cut down trees, you gather herbs, and you go hit rocks and, you know, gather ore. Mining, once you're past the copper and stone, iron was a huge pain to farm. Very difficult to find iron. And a lot of the times you would just run into a player that was in front of you that would be taking the resource. Not that that's there wrong at all, but there was just not enough iron in the world 
for everyone that needed it. Now they have, since I started playing, increased the amount of iron that is in the world, and that has helped a ton for that level, but the higher level, Pallium, is so difficult to farm unless you kind of want to cheese it a little bit. Pallia is the highest level of mineral and you're going to need that to make all of your highest level tools basically. And the spawns for these things are awful. I mean, it's I believe 45 minutes to an hour for the ore to respawn and there's a handful of nodes for you to get it. The way you cheese it is you just find an area that you like to farm for it because you know there's nodes there and you just log off and log back in. Every single time you log back in, it takes you into a new instance. But I really don't feel like in a game that's supposed to be cozy, enjoyable, you know, I'm fine with grinding, but like the highest level material currently in the game anyways, I'm sure higher level things are going to come out. It shouldn't have an hour respawn time. There shouldn't only be, you know, 20 or less nodes for it. I shouldn't have to find some cheese method to gather this material in a large enough amount to make all of those tools. The nice thing is once you make the tools, as long as you don't let them break, you never have to recraft them. So I somewhat understand the scarcity, but for a non-competitive game, I don't really understand it. Furniture making is kind of frustrating right now because you aren't able to sell the furniture that you make and there is no type of like salvage process in this game. So you're going to send a ton of your materials that you get into making furniture, especially if you're into the homemaking and you can never get those resources back and you can also never sell that furniture. You can't sell it for any gold or anything. So th these are just lost materials and you're definitely going to be making a lot of things that you're not going to end up using purely just because it takes a large amount of furniture to actually level up the skill. So it's extremely frustrating when you have to just destroy or take up some of your storage space with all of this random shit that you had to make purely because you had to level the skill up and there's no other way to do it. Fishing and gardening are definitely the most enjoyable for me. Gardening, it's very straightforward. The system works well. There's a handful of different things you can make. It's a really easy way to make food. It's a really easy way to make money and it's extremely self-sufficient. There is a crafting table that lets you put in, you know, like tomatoes, for example, and you're able to get tomato seeds back from them. So once you get started, it's very, very nice and simple. Fishing, also super straightforward, really enjoyable. I feel like they definitely put a lot of time into fishing. There is a ton of different types of fish. There are different baits that you're able to use, and depending on the bait that you use, there are different fish that you'll be able to catch. You're able to catch different fish depending on what time of day it is. And I feel like based off the questing system that has a very particular thing that has to do with fishing, it's very obvious that they got to this point and that that's when they decided to release. So fishing definitely got the majority of the love because of this specific quest that you have to do. Lastly, to touch upon the store basically that's in the game. So you are able to put in money to buy premium currency. This premium currency you can use to purchase outfits. I personally do not care at all that you're able to buy outfits. I think it's great. A lot of the starter materials, or sorry, outfits do look very good. And hopefully as the game does fully release, you're able to get more in-game outfits instead of having to just buy them with currency. However, since the game did give you a lot of good choices, with your character selection, I don't feel like it's too terrible for them to sell a couple costumes for money, especially because the game itself is free, so how else is this company going to actually be making any money? I will say that the prices for these outfits are a little questionable in my opinion. It's definitely around that amount where it's a little predatory just in regards to what you're going to have to purchase to get the correct amount of currency to buy those outfits. And I have to say the only scummy thing that they've done in my opinion is they've introduced pets basically which there's only one pet right now and they've said that they're probably not going to make any other pets anytime soon but they put this whole system behind a paywall because you're not able to actually get that pet unless you put money in again i understand the company does have to make money but for a whole unique system that they're not going to touch again for a questionable amount of time to put that behind a paywall i feel like is just not the nicest thing in the world for the people that are playing your game to somewhat summarize everything for you, basically the game itself is very enjoyable. If you're the type of person that likes just doing the same thing kind of over and over again, like farming, like fishing, you know, wood cutting, stuff like that, this is definitely the game for you. While they're still releasing a lot of things for these skills, I would say there's a, a good amount of content in the game, especially for someone that's maybe going to hop on like two, three hours a week, you can definitely 
have a very enjoyable time in this game. Even if you're someone like me that sits down and kind of puts like four to seven hours a day into a game, there is a good amount of content for you to do. I do feel like though, if you're a min-maxer, this game might not be ready for you, if that makes sense. There's still some things that they're fixing, and obviously the game is nowhere close to a full release. The world, the graphics, the gameplay, the characters that are in that world, the NPCs, are all very well thought out, and they do work very well together. I do feel like it does give that, you know, cozy home community vibe and you are able to play with friends i will just say that it's not really that massive multiplayer game that you might be thinking it is if you have a small little group of friends that enjoys playing games like this i can definitely see everyone having a very good time sharing their houses with each other going and gathering materials together just don't expect to run into you know a hundred people at some rare fishing spot or something like that if this game were to be you know $20, $30, $40, I would probably recommend everyone just waits until they actually have a full release of the game before they buy it. However, this game is currently free right now, so I don't think there's any reason for you to not go play it if you're even the slightest bit interested, because it's free. There's no negatives. I, I mean, nobody's going to force you to pay anything. If you really want that little cat, they're called pal cats, it's only a couple bucks, so if you for some reason really need it, you can put in a couple dollars and get that cat. But other than that, there's absolutely nothing that you're going to have to put your money to. It's just all your time. If you're even the slightest bit interested in this game, I highly recommend that you go check it out and let me know down below what you think. For everyone, I apologize for being gone for a couple weeks. I was away from my computer kind of handling some stuff. So I should be back on track, probably going to be releasing stuff a little bit slower than I did. Mostly because I'm going to be aiming for like 80 to 100 hours in a game before I do release for it. So, as always guys, I greatly appreciate all the support and I hope to see you on the next one.